imagine to relive a sensation, tracks of spatial perception, materialized along the subject's path through space-time. A four-dimensional process manifests itself as a three-dimensional object. Spatial perception is based on a pair of two-dimensional perspectives, shot out of slightly different angles. To put it simply, the brain overlays those two images and by the pattern's difference between picture A and B, it calculates the distance along the z-axis. One could imagine this result as a grayscale image where white stands for close and black for remote. The combination of image and z-information creates spatial impression. So much for stereoscopy. Perception enables time, time enables perception of difference. As mentioned earlier, we wanted to create a kind of distilling process which produces a three-dimensional analogy as an essence of a four-dimensional experience. Therefore, one has to set up a bundle of rules and definitions. Stereoscopy gives spatial impression, but you need to move through a certain space in order to learn more about its qualities. Out of a continuous series of spatial impressions, our brain is able to construct the whole model. If you define continuous motion as a first rule, one can get rid of stereoscopy. Just the same way one can analyze a pair of synchronously shot, slightly different perspectives, one is able to compute spatial impression via continuously evolving perspectives shot along a motion path. This process is more complicated than the previous one. In order to get reasonable results, one has to track each pixel and trace its path along three or more images. The more images you involve, the better and more precise results you get. The outcome of this step is a database of so-called average pixel speeds starting at the keyframe and ending at the last image evolved in the cluster. Pixels with approximately the same speeds join into a pattern, the perspectival projection of an object. Just the same way one can express the sad information, one can express the different speeds with a grayscale image too. From white for high till black for no speed. High speed also equals low distance from the viewer. The closer you come towards an object, the faster its equivalent pattern moves within the perspectival projection of the scene. This summing and averaging of speeds also equals the recording of the level of difference. The level of difference should become the second rule. In order to define solid and empty spaces, we define the range of interest. In the case of the following project, we set it to 10 seconds. At an average speed of 0.9 meters per second, the sphere of influence was 9 meters. At 78 degrees angle of view, the materialization width became approximately 15 meters. Now one has to clip the levels of the calculated grayscale images according to the definitions in order to get sharp edged black and white images, black as empty and white as solid. This is the rule to convert the three-dimensional information into a two-dimensional diagram. To materialize those series of diagrams as three-dimensional objects, one needs a third rule. The motion path falls together with the time axis, our new z axis. So one puts a diagram, which is an analogy or essence of the subjective spatial perception of an existence moving through space-time to the exact place and time of its creation. Then one extrudes it along the z-axis by the distance covered till the next image was shown. The outcome can be understood as an analogy for the four-dimensional perception or spatial sensation of a subject moving to space-time. We called it echoes because of the affinity to the phenomenon of sound relived at the place of its origin. Imagine to relive a sensation, tracks of spatial perception.
Imagine to relive a sensation, tracks of spatial perception, materialized along the subject's path through space-time. A four-dimensional process manifests itself as a three-dimensional object. <laughs> 